This is part two of uh, double entry recording. And I have some <coughs> list of transactions that I want us to use to enhance our understanding. Um, this is for a sole trader business. And then they started their business in looking at the transactions date by date. <coughs> These are some few transactions. June 1, they started business with cash of 10,000. Now what it means is that <coughs> the business started operations on 1st June. And then they started business with the cash of 10,000. Now I told you, listen, whenever there is any transaction that you want to open, we are going to open ledger accounts for these transactions. But whenever there is a transaction like this and you want to open ledger accounts, the procedures to follow are one, identify the two accounts involved in every transaction. Because I told you that um, the double entry recording means that the transaction will affect each party twice. And so there is a double effect of the transaction. And so there are two accounts that must come out of every transaction. And so we first have to identify the two accounts that are involved in every transaction. Then the next thing is that we find out we find out whether we are going to debit which account and credit which account. But we have said that every debit entry must have a corresponding credit entry. So we ask, are you going to debit or credit? And then we do so. So looking at the first transaction, started business with cash of ten thousand. What are the two accounts involved here? Now, obviously there is cash. Now, whenever you see started business, the only thing that should come to your mind is capital. So, started business in every transaction means that there was an introduction of capital. So, the two accounts involved here are capital accounts and cash accounts. Sometimes you will not see the cash, you see started business, 10,000, with 10,000. Definitely, by default, it is cash. Except the question is so specific that this, this 10,000 was put in a bank account directly then it will be capital and bank account. But for this very transaction, it is capital account and cash account. And so what we are going to do is that we are going to open account for capital, capital account, and then we are going to open an account for cash. So cash account. Okay, now when we open an account, we have to put our currency signs as the amount column. Okay, so this is what we do. So started business with cash. So we've identified capital account and cash account from this transaction. The next question we ask ourselves is, which one are we supposed to debit? And which one are we supposed to credit? Obviously, one should be debited. Now, looking at capital, what class of account is it and what is the rule? Cash account, what class of account is it and what is the rule? Now, whenever there is any, any transaction involving cash, always it is always advisable to look at it from the cash side. Then you ask yourself, is cash coming in or cash is going out of the business? Then that will inform you of the entry that you do in the other account. So, looking at cash accounts and capital accounts, we will see that once he's introducing cash into the business, cash is coming. And from the rule of real account, we debit what comes in. And so we are going to debit cash. And once we are going to debit cash, automatically we are going to credit capital. Now, most of the time, when there is an introduction of capital, always we credit capital account. I will explain why it is so. But then for now, we are looking at it from the side of cash. And so we are saying that cash is coming in. And so we are going to credit debit cash account with 10,000 CDs. And then it will be in the name of capital. So the narration here will be the corresponding account. And then you put June 1 here at the date column. So June 1, there was a capital of 10,000. This is inside the cash account. Now what I have done is that I have debited cash in the name of capital. I have debited cash account in the name of capital. Once I finish this, I come to the credit side. I'm supposed to go to the credit of the capital account. The same date is June 1. And then this time around, it will be in the name of cash. Because the corresponding entry is in the cash account. And I will see 10,000 cities. So that is the first 
transaction. And that is what we have done. Okay. Then we go to the second transaction. The second transaction is opening a business bank account with 6,000. Open a business bank account with 6,000. Now, business bank account, meaning that some of this cash was transferred to the bank to open an account, and it's 6,000 cities. And so the two accounts involved here is bank and cash. Even though cash is not mentioned in there, but definitely it is the cash that we have started business with that we are using part to open an account. So it is cash and bank. And so we are going to open a bank account Now, we are not going to open cash account again because we already have a cash account. And so, bank and cash. Now, the question we ask ourselves now is that, which one are we supposed to debit? And which one are we supposed to credit? Now, cash account is a real account. Bank account is also a real account. Both are real. This is cash at bank, this is cash in hand. And so we ask ourselves, which one is getting the cash coming in and which one is getting the cash going out? Once we are taking money into the bank, it means that cash is coming into the bank. And per the rule of real account, we say that we debit what comes in and we credit what goes out. And so on June 2nd, we are going to debit bank accounts in the name of cash. And that will be 6000 And when we go to the credit side of the cash account, June 2nd, it will be in the name of bank, 6000 so that is what we are doing so these are the double entries for these two i'll come back to explain something on the capital but you let's continue and then looking at the next transaction we have june 4th they bought goods on credit from tunde 1500 bought goods on credit from tunde now the two accounts involved here because it is goods that they are buying it is purchases I told you that purchases refers to goods that are bought for resale. This is stock purchases. So this is purchases account. And then we open Tunde's account. Take note. We are opening Tunde's account because it is on credit. It is a credit transaction. If it was a cash transaction, we would have opened purchases and cash. And Tunde's account wouldn't have appeared in our books. So let us be mindful that the only time we open a personal account is when the transaction is on credit. That is why I said that personal accounts are accounts of debtors and creditors alone. If it is not on credit, you do not open a personal account. And so because it's on credit, we are going to open Tunde's account. <coughs> and then we open purchases account. So, Tunde and purchases. So what we are going to do next is to find out which account to debit and which account to credit. So looking at this transaction, we are buying goods on credit from Tunde. Which one are we debiting? And which one are we crediting? Tunde is a personal account. So what is the rule for personal accounts? So you can decide to apply the rule from anywhere. And once you are able to get a debit or a credit entry somewhere, automatically the corresponding entry will be opposite. There is no way you will get a double debit. And so Tunde is a personal account. We are buying goods on credit from him. So if we ask ourselves, is Tunde receiving the goods or giving? Because the rule for personal accounts is debit the receiver and credit the giver. So Tunde is giving us the goods. We are buying meaning that Tunde is the one giving it out. And so because Tunde is giving, we are going to credit the giver. And so on June, we are going to credit to the in the name of purchases because purchases is the corresponding account. Okay, and then the amount is 1500 And then when we come to purchases account, because we have credited to the automatically we must debit purchases. We don't have any option. On the other hand, we are debiting purchases because purchases is an expense. And the rule for nominal account is that debit or expenses and so that is why we are debiting purchases and so on the same date june 4th it will be in the name of tunde and the amount is 1500 
So that is it for Tony's account and budget. Now looking at the next transaction, we bought goods by check, 1,000. Bought goods by check. What are the two accounts involved here? Once we are seeing both goods, there are two accounts are purchases and bank accounts. Bank accounts because of check. Anytime you see check, it is a bank account that will be affected because the check will be drawn and then uh, withdrawn from your bank account. And so once you are buying by check, it means that it is affecting your bank account. So the two accounts here are uh, purchases and bank accounts. Then we ask ourselves, which one are we debiting? We already have bank accounts, we already have purchases accounts. So we are not going to open them again. It's already there. So purchases account is an expense account. What is the rule for expense? Debit or expenses. So obviously we are going to debit purchases account. And once we debit purchases, automatically we are going to credit bank. On the other hand, we can look at it from the side of the bank first. Now, looking at the bank account, is cash coming in or cash is going out? You see that the rule is changing. Here I was looking at expenses, but here it is a real account. So the rule is debit what comes in and credit what goes out. Once 1000 is going out of our bank account, it means that we credit what goes out. So we are going to credit the bank account, June C, in the name of purchases. 1000 and definitely we have to come and debit purchases account June C in the name of bank 1000 so these are the dynamics of the double entry system now we're looking at the next transaction we have sold goods to cash for cash sorry sold goods for cash to ya the two accounts involved here once it is goods we are selling it is sales it is sales because sales is a disposal of stock. But are we opening cash account or your account? Of course, we are supposed to open cash account because this is not a credit transaction. This is a cash transaction. I told you that even though they may mention the name of the person, we still open, we would have opened your account if only it was on credit. But because it is by cash, we are already sold and taking the cash. We don't need to open your account again. So the two accounts here are sales account and cash account. We already have uh, the cash account, so we open the sales account. Okay, so when we come to sales account now, the, the account is between sales and cash. Then we ask the same question again. Which one are we debiting and which one are we crediting? Obviously, <coughs> cash account is a real account, so we apply the real rule. Sales is income, so it's a nominal account. Okay, so we ask ourselves, is cash coming in or cash is going out? Because we are selling for cash, cash is coming in. And the rule is that debit what comes in, so we are supposed to debit cash. On the other hand, looking at this from the side of sales, sales is income. And we credit all incomes and gains, so we have to credit it. So we credit and debit. So if you do not apply the rule well and you get a double debit or a double credit, you are making a mistake. It has to always be one debit and one credit. And so we are going to debit cash account June 8 in the name of sales and the amount is 800 fees. Then we come to sales account on the credit side. The date is June 8 in the name of cash 800 fees. So this is basically what we do when it comes to double entry. Looking at the next transaction, June 11, paid rent by check 500. Rent and bank. Once you see check, it's a bank account we are referring to. So the two accounts here are rent and bank. So what do we do? We open rent account because we already have the cash account or the bank account, sorry. So I open rent account. Okay, we open rent account and then which one are we debiting? Rent is an expense, and the rule says debit all expenses. So obviously we are going to debit rent. All right. On the other hand, looking at this from the side of the bank, bank is a, a, a real account, and we credit what goes out. And you can see that 500 is going out of our bank account. So we credit 500 in the name of rent, and the date is June 11. Then when we come to the debit of the rent account, June. Level in the name of bank 500. So that is what we do 
when it comes to the rent account. I believe you have really understood what we are doing. Now let's look at um, the last three transactions. I'll try to explain something. Look at June 14. Returned, returned 300 CD worth of goods to Tunde. Now who is Tunde? Tunde is a creditor to us. We bought goods from Tunde 1,500 and we are returning 300 to Tunde. So what we are going to do now is that we have to find the two accounts involved here first. So Tunde account obviously is one of them. And because we are returning to Tunde, it is a returns outwards. Okay, it's a returns outwards. So you can call it purchases returns. Okay, so we open purchases returns account. Purchases returns account. And then the next question we ask ourselves is always the same. Which one are we debiting and which one are we crediting? Now, once we are returning it out, it's between purchases returns and Tunde. Looking at this from the side of Tunde, Tunde is a personal account. And we are returning goods to Tunde. And the rule is that we debit the receiver and credit the giver. So Tunde is Tunde receiving the goods or giving. Once we are returning, he is receiving. So we have to debit Tunde and then credit returns out of. So the date is June 14. And we have purchases returns. And the amount is 300 CDs. And then when we come to this side, we come to the credit of purchases returns. June 14, in the name of Tunde, 300 CDs. Okay. So that is basically what we do when it comes to purchases returns account. Uh, account. Then we have June 16. The owner took 100 cars for private use. The owner of the business, the proprietor, took 100,000 cash for private use. So I told you that when the owner of a business takes business cash for private use, it's called drawings. And so here, the two accounts involved are drawings and cash. Drawings and cash. And so we are going to open drawings accounts. Drawings account. We already have the cash account. So the question will always remain the same. After knowing two accounts involved, you ask yourself which one is to be debited and which one is to be credited. Looking at drawings and cash, you may find it difficult. Let's assume that you are finding it difficult to know whether we are debiting drawings or not. But let's look at let's look at it from the cash aspect. Is cash coming in or cash is going out? So looking at cash, if a person is taking 100 cash, it means cash is going out. And for the real account, we credit what goes out. And so we come to cash account and we credit it 100 cities. June 16th, in the name of drawings. Now ladies and gentlemen, once you are able to identify one entry, the other entry is automatically the opposite. So once it's credit, we debit drawings. So June 16th. It will be in the name of cash, 100 cents. So that is how drawings is also going to be done. Okay, and looking at the last transaction, we have, we paid Tunde his account in full, less 10% cash discount. Now, the concept of discount comes in over here. We paid Tunde his account in full, less 10% cash discount. So there was no amount mentioned over here. But, so we have to come back and look at Tunde's account. We bought goods of credit from Tunde initially for 1,005, meaning we are owing Tunde 1,005. Then we return 300 of it. So looking at the difference, we have 1,200 difference. If you take 300 from 1,500, meaning that we owe Tunde 1,200. And if we are paying the account in full, it means we are paying all the 1,200. But there is a discount. Tunde is giving us a discount of 10%. And so we are supposed to pay and then close off the account. All right. So what we are going to do now is that the amount we are supposed to pay is 1,200. But we have 10% discount, which is 120. So taking the discount out, 
it means we are giving today an amount of 1080. This is the amount we are supposed to give to Tunde in cash. Okay, so listen very carefully. This is what we are going to do. It's between cash and Tunde. So, cash account is here, Tunde account is here. Which one are we debiting and which one are we crediting? Of course, cash is going out. And cash is going out means that we are going to credit cash. June 17th, Tunde. And the amount is 1,080. You are going to credit cash with the, <coughs> the exact amount we are paying because that is amount of cash we are actually losing in payment. So when we come to the corresponding entry in, on June 17th in Tunde's account, we are going to write cash, but the amount will be 1,080. Now, what happens to the 120 CD discount? We are not going to ignore it. Because when you are paying off someone's debt, it means that you are closing up an account from your books. And closing up an account means that the two sides must be equal without the balance carried down. And so what we are going to do is that when you add this up, you will see that the two sides will not be equal. The discount must still come to close up the account. And so what we do is that we are paying off all the thousand to but we are paying it in this manner. 1080 is cash, but the extra 120 CDs is a discount. The discount is supposed to make the two sides equal. And so once we write this 120 here, we will call it discount received because we are receiving a discount from Tunde. So this is a discount received on the same date. A discount received. And we can't just close it and say discount received without giving any corresponding entry. Because we said that every debit entry must have a corresponding credit entry. And once we have debited Tunde with 120, then we have to open the corresponding entry. And what do you think should be the name of the account? It should be discount received account. Because that is the name here. So the corresponding entry is discount received account. And it will come to the credit side June 17th in the name of Tunde 120. So what we have basically done here is that we have done a double entry between cash and Tunde, another double entry between discount received and, and Tunde. So anytime you are doing a double entry and you see a discount like this, you are basically going to do two double entries, which will make it a four entry. So a first double entry between the cash and the creditor. And then the second double entry between discount received and the creditor. The opposite is also true for discount allowed. When it is a debtor that is paying and we are allowing a discount, we are rather going to create a discount allowed account and then we are going to do the same entries that we have done. So this is uh, the first part of what we want that I want us to do. We are also going to look at uh, balancing of the account and then extracting the time balance. And that will be the next topic for discussion. Thank you.